Hello and welcome. I'm Davis DeWitt, and once again, I am joined by some weird looking clocks. Now, if you watched my last video, you'll remember how I turned this piece of former electronic scrap into a working Nixie clock. And while I'm really happy with how that project turned out, it relied on an existing housing, driver board, and code in order to work. So, in the true masochist nature of an engineer, I've decided to take my own crack at it and design a Nixie clock completely from scratch. Now, there are of course other Nixie clock builds out there, however, I feel they focus heavily on the engineering side. And while that part is important, I feel that oftentimes what gets overlooked is the artistic decisions that might go into designing a finished product. Because what I want is for someone to be able to pick up this clock and use it without feeling like they need an engineering degree. So to start this process, we need to take every component of this clock and redesign it from the ground up. The first step of which is taking this brick of a housing and turning it into something more sleek and desktop friendly because while I love the nuclear silo aesthetic that this gives, that doesn't necessarily match what most people would want or already have in their homes. All right, well, I've rummaged through the shop and found a few different examples of the manufacturing methods we can use to make our new enclosure. And what's important here is that we're really considering all the different elements that go into making a nice finished product. So out of the gate, one of the methods we have is 3D printing. And this is a great option for most things because it's fast and it's inexpensive. However, to make it look nice, you do have to do post-processing to get rid of all those layer lines. Next up, we have CNC machining. And I really like this method because it looks great and it's very durable given it's made out of aluminum. However, it's also really expensive. So the option that I'll be sticking with for this project is gonna be laser cut wood and acrylic because I think it balances the best of both worlds. We have something that looks nice, but it's also cost effective. And affordability is key because it makes your product more accessible to more people. All right, now that we have our material selected, we can actually begin our design, since each manufacturing method requires a slightly different approach to how we actually create our models. To line everything up, I've thrown all the components into my CAD program and arranged them how I want the finished product to look. The driving force here is that I want the base of the clock to be as thin as possible, because the visual emphasis on this project is the Nixie tubes. And if the bottom of the clock gets too large, then it pulls the eye downwards, away from the display. With that in mind, we can lock in our design and move on to building the circuit board that will connect the components together. Don't worry, I'll keep this section short, because I realize that PCB design is not terribly thrilling. However, what I do want to cover are the three major design stages for any PCB build. The first of which is selecting the components you want and making sure they're compatible. Once that's complete, you can start drafting your schematic and importing the component footprints so they can be arranged on the board itself. After that, you can finally start routing all the connections between them. Again, my main goal here is to design a board that's compact and simple, because while it's tempting to start adding in more features, Ease of use is the ultimate goal. All right, well, our PCB design is finally complete, and that means it's time to send this design off to get manufactured by our friends over at PCBWay, who've been very kind to sponsor this video. And best of all, they allow minimum production runs of only five boards. So that means I don't have to order like 100 boards just to test my prototypes. All right, I just got my boards back from PCBWay, and as always, they look fantastic. This time, I opted for a black solder mask with either yellow or white silk screening, just to give this whole project a nice, sleek appearance. Because when it comes to builds like this, I like to think of the PCB as your unique signature on the project, and even if most people won't see it, I still think it's something worth taking pride in. Well, now that we have all the circuit boards here, it's time to move on to one of the more fun parts of this build, and that's cutting out all of the enclosure pieces using my giant laser. All right, now that we have our acrylic and our walnut pieces for the enclosure cut, I can quickly touch on something that I want to highlight, and that's for these wood pieces, thinking about the direction our grain is going to go. And I know it seems silly, but for stuff like this, you have to think about how it's going to look in the finished product. And since this is a display, our eyes naturally read from left to right. So as a result, I've cut our wood grain from left to right. 
Conversely, if the wood grain went from top to bottom, it would pull the eye downwards. And as I've talked about before, I don't really want that because it makes the clock look taller. So really all I'm trying to make a point of is that uh, thinking about when you're making something, how does someone's eye move naturally around the object and putting your design language to help that instead of fight it. Anyways, with that being said, now that we have this done, we can start putting our components in. So I'm gonna go back to the workbench and show you what those components are and what they do. First up, of course, are the Nixie tubes that serve as the heart of this project, and those will then get plugged into our custom circuit board. Joining them will be the Arduino microcontroller, which is not only tiny, but also has the exact number of I.O. pins I need. Following that is the decoder chip that allows me to directly drive the tubes from the Arduino. And to power those tubes, we have the voltage transformer that bumps up the incoming 5 volts to the 170 volts required by the Nixies. After that is the real-time clock module, which ensures we keep accurate time. And last but not least, we have our RGB LEDs that will serve as the backlight to our display. With all the components sourced, I can finally begin assembling everything, and one of the design considerations that came up was whether to have any visible fasteners. Because while a set of nice screws can elevate the look of something, I wanted this enclosure to appear almost seamless. As a result, I opted for internal screws and mechanical retention to hold everything together. We are finally on the home stretch, and with the enclosure finished, it's time to talk about the most boring part of this project, which is all the code I wrote. Um, I won't actually go into details because I realize that it's actually boring. However, like the proud parent I am, I do want to share all the features I integrated into the finished product. The first of which is a color selector for the backlight that, most importantly, remembers what color was picked even after the clock gets powered off. The second feature is a cathode poisoning routine that cycles all of the digits at the top of the hour and every time the clock boots up. This just helps even the wear between the minute and hour tubes. Next is a toggle to select either 12 or 24 hour time, and like the LEDs, it remembers which selection you picked whenever the clock is power cycled. Following that is the time set function that uses the backlights to show which digits are being changed. And last but not least is a thermal shutoff that protects all the components. This was accomplished using the RTC chip's built-in thermometer, and once the temperature drops back to a safe level, the tubes automatically power back on. Now, all of these features are of course not strictly necessary, but when you're designing a product that will leave your hands, you have to consider all of the situations someone might encounter while using it. Either way, the end result is a small, elegant design that I think nicely highlights the unique look of Nixie tubes. Well, we have our Nixie clocks built, we have our code written. What could be left? Why, an accompanying graphic novel, of course. As the final cherry on top to this build, I needed a way to share the instruction manual without relying on something boring like a QR code. As a result, I decided to put my spin on something we see every day, which is the common receipt. Now, normally they're boring and don't have any pictures, so I wanted to make something that was a little bit more fun and had some graphics. Now, if you want to know exactly how I made these, I put a video together that shows how to print whatever you want onto a receipt. I'll throw a link up if you want to check it out. Anyways, that brings this build to a close, and hopefully, if there's any of you considering designing something, eh, maybe this video was at least a little bit helpful. Now, obviously, there are many aspects to this build that I didn't get a chance to touch on just because it would have taken too long. So, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments, and I'll try my best to answer as many as I can. As for the clocks, I'm selling the small batch I made for this video on my website, but if you're sick in the head like I am, I suggest you take the leap and try designing your own from scratch instead. Now, granted, there are, of course, a lot of steps, but thanks to places like PCBWay, it's so much easier and cheaper to design PCBs all on your own. So I threw a link in the description. Check it out if you want. All that being said, thank you so much for watching, and be sure to stay tuned for future builds.